dear students of class 9 welcome to you all i have already started the discussion about the french revolution now i like to rediscuss the contribution of philosophers in the french revolution because i think today that something new facts and figures may be added now the first question what was the contribution of the philosophers of the french in the french revolution this is the, this is the most important question in the french revolution you see that the philosophers like montesquieu voltaire rousseau quesne denis didero they have contributed to the development to the ideas of french revolution they wrote several books and through the writings they created consciousness among the people in the beginning i may mention the montesquieu in his book the spirit of laws he advocated the separation of powers instead of centralized government centralized administration that is executive judiciary and legislative power similarly montesquieu in another book partial letters partial letters he criticized the privileges of the clergy now although he must remember he was a french nobleman and lawyer montesquieu voltaire was another scholar a french philosopher he also severely criticized the privileges of the aristocracy and church in his book kandid k n d i d the most important and powerful philosopher or very famous philosopher jean riac rousseau once napoleon remarked that if rousseau was not born at the time there would have been no french revolution so rousseau in his book the social contract what he declared people's sovereignty sovereignty of the people sovereign power of the people what was the previous theory divine right kingship now completely disregarded the theory and that king was actually selected by the people and so it is in this way he upheld the theory of people sovereignty man is everywhere is man is born free but everywhere he is in chain said by rousseau now a group of physiocrats economists the leader was quesne they also advocated the free trade in europe and there he wrote a book called theory of taxation theory of taxation denis diderot another philosopher french philosopher he wrote a book encyclopedia in this book he also severely criticized the privileges enjoyed by the clergyman and the church so their books are widely read in the salon and coffee house and their books were now news and you see that the pamphlets news was published in newspapers which were read by the educated persons and those who are actually some books were widely read by, largely read by the people some books were actually it was it was actually distributed among the people so that people in this way people of france can began to know about the their writings and they are the condition of france of that time we see that what was the ester general ester general was a political body to which three representatives three estates representative of three estates joined or participated they used to sit there and it was last summoned in 1614 now the question may come louis the 16th summoned it why so question that when did he summon 5th may 1789 and why it was summoned in order to impose taxes on the people of france he brought a new proposal of taxes now why because france at the time 
totally economic economy had faced economic crisis so it was the, there is a law by during the old regime that king could not impose taxes at his own will he had to take permission of the representatives of the three estates otherwise he would not be able to impose taxes on the people now describe the estates general i made it brief estates general after it was summoned by louis louis the 16th in the resplendent hall of versailles the members of the representatives of the three estates came and the number of members of first and second estates 300 representatives they each seated in a rows facing each other while the 600 third estates members they stood in the at the back of the two estates they they actually this was the position and we see that the the member other like the women the peasants and ordinary men were not allowed to enter into the assembly however most of the third estates member were came from the educated classes they were very prosperous and educated classes etc when the whenever they brought when i mean the peasants and the common people they actually did not were not allowed to enter but they sent greet their grievances in the form of letters some 40000 letters were brought by the representatives that is third estates you see that the i may mention the name of mirabo one of the leaders or one of the representatives of the third estates now next question is what was the demand of the third estates the traditional demand traditionally our old system was that which was the voting right was to be conducted according to the each estate had one vote that was the voting principle which had been prevalent in old france each estate had one vote now when the assembly met the representatives of the third estates demanded voting now be conducted as a whole and where each member would have one vote now they demanded voting now be conducted as a whole in the assembly and where each member would have one vote when king heard it louis the 16 he dismissed the parliament or estates general because he refused to accept the demand and as a protest the members of the third estates walked out of the assembly so this is the incident now next incident is the what was tennis court oath when louis the 16th refused to accept the demand voting demand voting right demand of the third estates the members decided to walk out of the assembly in protest and they assembled in a in an adjacent tennis court in the versailles and where they decided they thought that they are the representatives of the whole nation french nation so they decided to draft a constitution and for so estates general was given a new name called national assembly later it was drafted they decided to draft a constitution for france and they also took a resolution that until like a new constitution was drafted they would not say they would not be separated so this is the resolution or pledge adopted by the members that they would as they would draft a constitution for the french nation and until or unless the constitution was drafted they would not be separated so this is the tennis court oath it was held in 20th june 1789 date you must remember what do you know about the rumors that spread during the french revolution 
वी नो दैट द फ्रेंच रेवल्यूशन उसी दैट द पीपल अटैक द बास्तिल फोर्ट एंड ग्रेजुअली द the key it was there is a rumor that the manorial lords rumors spread in france that manorial lords might attack with the help of the bands of brigands might attack the peasants and destroy their ripe crops so caught in a frenzy of fear the peasants collected or seized hoes and peach forks and attack the sato you see that the it is the sato it is it, means, it can be pronounced as sato c h a t a u x sato c h a t a u x it is a castle led by the lords one of the lords it is a castle so they attack the sato and also they destroyed the documents of manorial dues and they also looted hoarded grains and now naturally the nobles the feudal lords fled from the villages and took shelter in the neighboring countries or other places now what was the resolutions passed by the national assembly on the night of 4th august 1789 on 4th august 1789 several resolutions were passed by the national assembly 1789 that was the that they decided to abolish the feudal system and also feudal system of taxation they also decided to seize the lands or confiscate the lands of the or property of the church they also decided to abolish the all sorts of privileges enjoyed by the churchmen and thus the property they seized from the church estimated up to 2 billion livres next we see that what was the constitution drafted when was the constitution drafted by national assembly it was drafted in 1791 the national the constitution was drafted in 1791 what was the main object the main object of the the main object was to limit the power of the monarchs and you know that the, i discussed earlier that monarchs centralized all the powers in his hand instead of it the power would be separated into three divisions legislative judiciary and executive so france become a constitutional monarchy in this way next we see that what was the voting right of the people of france active and passive citizens the national assembly was the given the right to vote and it was elected to a direct indirect process the people have, were given voting right but there are two classes of people active citizens and passive citizens active active who are called active citizens those who are above 25 years and those who can those who paid taxes having the three days wage uh, laborers of wages are equal to and they are actually entitled to uh, they are given the right to vote and passive citizens the men and women who had no property could not and they had no right to vote and naturally they were known as passive citizens now what was declaration of rights of men and citizen it was the in the year 4th august that is the 1789 declaration of rights of men and citizen very important very in the history of france we see that the by this declaration the map, is that the men was given several you know freedom freedom of speech freedom of right to freedom of expression of opinion and equal rights to men and similarly the similar other rights were provided or it was given to the french people so this is how 
we see that the a great change appeared and the monarchy was already i am tell monarchy is mon power of the monarchy was curtailed and now french people was given the right to french was given the liber liberal right or freedom right or right to speak or right to express their opinion freely this is how the this is the importance of declaration so many other similar rights were given if necessary i will discuss later now what was the national anthem of france national anthem of france was marseille write down m a r s e i l l i s l l i s e m a r s e i l l i s e marseille because and who composed it rajat the lail a r o g t d o d l apostrophe s i s l e and it was composed from where it was composed for a uh, sung first in which place it was sung first it was sung first from marseille to paris the volunteers who actually led a used used to sung or used to sing this song or national anthem while they were going from versailles to paris so that is all and you must uh, see that the go through the again i will uh, rediscuss it later if necessary and now thank you all